three things that you can do that will make learning how to code much, much easier, whether it be HTML5 and CSS3 or whether it be a full programming language like PHP, Java, Python, whatever, pick, pick it, these three tips apply. I may have mentioned these in other vlogs, I'm not sure, frankly, because I put a lot of information into these vlogs. So this is gonna be a short vlog specific to these three tips, that's it. So tip number one, write notes, write handwritten notes specifically. When you are either watching a video, reading a book, whatever, however you are learning how to code, I strongly suggest that you take handwritten notes. So I, I get what these cheap uh, $1 uh, notebooks and I take notes all the time. Why should you take handwritten notes versus just doing the videos like most people would do? The reason is, is because by taking a handwritten note, you are going to commit the lessons to memory much more easily, much more quickly meaning you're gonna be able to remember the stuff that you're learning much more easily. Why is that? Because the brain takes in information through our senses, you know, sight, sound, touch, taste, smell. The more senses that you can activate during a particular experience, the more uh, your brain is gonna see that this particular experience is important and is gonna associate, it's gonna create a stronger memory in your brain. That's just simple uh, psychology. So when you uh, watch a video, for instance, you're seeing and you're hearing, so you're activating two senses, by taking a note and holding a pen and writing on a paper, you're activating your sense of touch. So you're adding another sensory input to uh, anchor that memory in your brain. There's other things you can do as well, but just by taking notes, you may not even have to review the notes, but I'm telling you, if you take notes as you are learning, pause the video, take a note, pause the video, take a note, you're gonna see how it's gonna make learning how to code much, much easier. Tip number two in learning how to code is that you should get to writing code as quickly as possible. There is something about writing code. Don't make the mistake I've made in the past where I spent a couple weeks, a month, reading about coding, trying to understand the principles intellectually by reading about code, what you should be doing is actually coding as soon as possible. Even if the code that you're writing you don't understand fully, you may only understand half of it. Write it anyway, because a strange things happens when you actually write code. It actually triggers the brain once again to want to put more efforts, probably when you're sleeping or in your back of your mind, some process, I don't know what it is, and it's going to help you to learn how to code much more quickly than you would otherwise. And what you'll find is the more you code, the quicker the concepts behind the code are going to become understandable to you. I've, I've experienced this myself uh, when I was learning how to code way back in the day. It was something interesting. I got this principle of of jumping into the practical end of something, in this case coding, from my martial arts background. What I discovered many years ago, that one sparring session, six minute sparring session, well, six to eight minute sparring session, was worth more than months of training, you know, doing pad work, doing drills, doing heavy bag work, in the case of boxing, for instance. So actual sparring, getting in there, mixing it up, was worth so much more than doing theoretical exercises. And sure enough, I applied that principle in martial arts and it worked in coding rather from my martial arts. By writing real code, you're gonna learn much more quickly. That's why in my courses, in uh, right away, the first day really, students are actually writing code right away. It's such an important thing to do. And tip number three, when learning how to code, be prepared to make mistakes. Coding, writing code, coding, programming is a process filled with errors. And if you're nervous about making errors, like a lot of people are, that will slow you down in terms of learning how to code. Don't be nervous about making errors. Even the best programmers in the world are constantly making errors. That's why all these professional tools, these IDEs, the inter integrated development environments, have all these tools built in to help you deal with errors because it is 
normal. We're dealing with a lot of complexity when we're coding, even with the simpler languages, and so a lot of mistakes can be introduced. It's just normal. That's why we have many versions of apps. We have Windows 10 and iOS 9, or is it at 10? I don't know. Now, okay, there's two reasons why we have new versions of, of operating systems or new versions of languages. Number one reason is because we want to add new features. So there's Windows 10 because there's a lot of new features. There's Mac OS 10 because there's a lot of new features. But another reason why you have new versions of operating systems or new versions of programming languages, like you have, as Java's at what, uh, I don't know what it's at now, 1.7, or I haven't looked at Java in years, or PHP is at PHP 7. Uh, Python's at, at Python 3, 3.52, last I checked. The reason you have these new versions is because they're correcting problems with older versions, especially when you have the, the sub number. So like if you have Python, for instance, so you have Python 3.5, why 0.5? Well, not because necessarily they are adding new features, they're probably doing bug fixes, they're probably doing some minor architectural fixes, especially when you have sub sub numbers, so here's 3.5.2, that 0.2 typically is because they're fixing bugs. So even the most experienced programmers, coders in the world, they're gonna be making mistakes all the time. So you, as somebody who's learning, has you have to accept and expect that you're going to make mistakes. So don't get, well, try not to, get too flustered or too anxious or, uh, or, or impatient when you make mistakes as you are learning how to code. It's just par for the course. I know it's easy, easier said than done. I'm the type of guy, once in a while I admit I've screamed at my computer because things weren't working. Usually not because of bad code I've written, although that's happened where especially dealing with uh, early beta versions of .NET a long time ago, where you wrote the code and things didn't work, you're like, why isn't this working? And you get all angry and you get frustrated, but you gotta understand that's part of the process and the calmer you can stay in those situations, I mean, all situations in life, really, the calmer you can stay, the more easily you're going to solve the problem. When I used to box, one of the things we were, I was taught by my coach, who was a highly accomplished fighter, he used to say, what you want to do to get the fighter off his game, you want to invoke some sort of emotion in them. You either want to get them angry at you, or you want to get them scared of you. One or the other. Both are good. Because when they're angry or they're scared, they're going to make stupid mistakes, and it's going to be harder for them to, to figure out your weaknesses. So one of the things they always we, we were taught to do is to stay calm at all costs, to stay calm, but to get them flustered, get them angry, get them scared, get them anxious, get them impatient. And that gave you an advantage as a fighter over them. And that's why you see before fights, it's partly to sell, sell the fight, but you see a lot of fighters, there's a lot of insults thrown around. Sometimes it's fake. But sometimes they're really trying to get under the skin of the other fighter to throw them off their game. So when you're learning how to code, don't throw yourself off your game by getting uh, emotional about it, getting angry or getting frustrated. Try to stay calm. And if you come to a situation when you're trying to learn something in coding and it's just not working out, take a break, walk away, do something else. Typically, the day later or two days later or whatever, four days later, it will come to you and you go, ah, oh, now I understand. So just, uh, that's it. Those are my, uh, my three tips on how to code. I hope you find them useful. Bye-bye.